Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another special episode of the what was formerly the Fusion Cast and has now become kind of IBM Storage News more broadly, and in particular, uh, the Ceph series, which uh, we've been building out over the last couple of years. So happy to be joined again by uh, Marcel Hergarten, one of our PMs uh, for Ceph, to talk about the new uh, version, uh, version 8 of Ceph, that is announced, uh, has been announced, correct? Already is yeah. that right, Marcel? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Randy. Uh, thank you for for having me. And yeah. indeed, we have released uh, IBM Storage Surf version eight mm -hmm. uh, that uh, has been done in the November twenty seventh. Awesome. So right before the end of the month. Uh, and is it is it GA? Is it simultaneously GA, or is it GA later this month? Probably. No, it is uh, it is fully uh, fully GA. And I said the twenty seventh, but that's not correct. It was the twenty one ah, <laughs> of okay. November? Yeah. So right, announced so on the on the nineteenth and released GA on the twenty first, twenty one November. Yeah. So well established already. Okay, cool. All right. So so let's dive into it and talk a little bit about what the new features are. So you know, I would say as a just kind of a preamble or a precursor, we're seeing a lot of demand for Ceph. It seems like it's really ramping up aggressively. Uh, I know I'm seeing it in a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of uh, interest in um, Ceph for both kind of data lake or data uh, lake house applications with Watson X, but just more broadly as a general purpose storage defined software um, uh, capability and, and offering. So um, it's cool to see. It's great to see that it's really growing and picking up steam. So um, so let's talk about what's new. I, I know you sent me a, a slide, which I'm going to put up here just because I think it makes it a little bit easier to talk through it and we can uh, kind of go through them in, in order. So let's do that. Yeah, sounds like a plan. There is a lot of new stuff uh, going on. And as you yeah. mentioned, Yep. This is All a, right. this is also a full uh, uh, multi-protocol, or if you will, unified storage release. Yeah. Supports file, block, and object storage from a single storage platform, actually. Which is pretty awesome. So, so I know, and I don't want to jump ahead, but I know we're getting into uh, uh, the tech preview phase for some of the new file access with SMB, which is pretty exciting. So, um, anyway, so so let's walk through. Let's start with the, um, you know, I guess we'll just work our way kind of, you know, left to right, top to bottom, and kind of go through the different features and just give me your take on on each one. Yeah, that, uh, that would work for me indeed. I hope also for our audience. So uh, let's start with NVMe over TCP. This is a vehicle uh, to, to uh, expose block storage. Ceph uh, block storage, Ceph RBD, stands for Rados block device, can be exposed through NVMe over TCP and typically used in use cases for VMware storage. And it has a, a vSphere uh, client also, mm -hmm. so a plugin, so that you can actually manage the storage from a vSphere perspective. And that means that you don't have to be a Ceph specialist uh, uh, or, or deep down the weeds of all the, the nitty gritty details, but you can actually manage your volumes and your connections from fees per perspective by the use of this plugin. So there is a lot of new functionality and also broadened capacity uh, to address enterprise needs actually in this uh, NVMe over TCP functionality. Nice. So, of course, a lot of people are trying to get away from VMware, but for those who are not, this provides some great functionality and ways to kind of optimize their persistent storage and do so in a very cost-effective uh, way. So that's that's cool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this, this is also actually uh, feasible to use this as a replacement for vSAN. As you know, if uh, clients buy a, a VMware vSphere cluster and they want to use vSAN, then you first need to have the ESX license, and then you can add on uh, vSAN. Uh, as an add-on, so you need to do both. And that means in scaling, you also have to scale synchronous with that. So you need the both licenses. But now by decoupling the storage from the VMware compute, you are able to scale your uh, storage separately from the compute. And that means more flexibility, actually. And you have, as an addition, you also have object and file capabilities as a surplus with that. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, so that's awesome. Good news for uh, the block side of the house and for VMware in particular. So yeah. let's talk about um, what I think is kind of the, maybe the coolest part. Maybe it's not, but I think it is <laughs> the, uh, the SMB access. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, SMB, this stands for Server Message Block, aka Windows File Sharing, uh, if you will. So now you can expose CephFS, file system volumes, 
uh, you can now expose them by uh, uh, SMB also, server message block. And that means that you can access from a Windows server, you can access the Ceph file system. And uh, that supports version two and version three of the SMB protocol. And there is a lot of sophisticated capability in there. And you can also integrate with Active Directory for authentication, authorization, these kind of things. And it also supports um, uh, ACLs. That stands for access uh, control lists, and you can also uh, integrate these in, in those uh, CFFS volume shares, actually. Um, for now, this is tech preview, and that means that you can play around with it, try things out. It's not uh, um, meant for production use, it's at this time, and yep. that will come in the next minor release of uh, IBM Storage Ceph, the next update, and we will probably uh, release this GA so that you can use it in production environments. So that's the current status of SMB. I, I know you can't commit to it, but when approximately do you think that that incremental release would happen? Oh, that would that would be uh, in the second quarter of the next year. So um, yeah, after Q1, and then you can expect that to, to come around. Awesome, that's exciting. That yeah, it, it is, and it's a new yes. opportunity actually for 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 clients also to uh, to make uh, more use of uh, of IBM Storage Ceph besides the yeah. object and block uh, functionality. And we already have very robust support for NFS, but this gives us, of course, broader access to to Windows file shares as well, which is uh, pretty cool. So yeah, good that you bring that up actually NFS because we also enabled uh, a new NFS version, version four point two. Uh, also suitable now with uh, with CFFS. It was already 4.1. It was a clustered NFS, and the same is also true for that SMB. It's a clustered environment, so there is fill over included. You are not dependent on one single node or on a single head, if you will. So that both is true for, for SMB and NFS, and NFS now supports also version 4.2. There's a lot of detail uh, in this. Uh, a lot of sophisticated capabilities are coming along with 4.2, uh, but we don't have the time to dive in all those details yeah, yeah. right now. Right? Well, we'll do that in a future call. So Yeah, right. cool. sounds like a plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, and um, Rados Gateway, provide, it looks like it's going to be providing now some interesting uh, enhanced functionality for AWS and using IAM and multi-tenancy and the like. So let's let's go through that one. Yeah, uh, for the people who are not really familiar with Separator's Gateway, RGW is actually the S3 endpoint where, where the clients connect to. So that's the, the uh, object interface for Ceph. And that has a lot of new functionalities here. So what we have right now is a policy-based data archive migration. And that was already there that you could archive data to public cloud so that you free up uh, space in your, your uh, production cluster and to move older data to, to public cloud. And now there's an ability to also retrieve that back by, by keeping a, a, a head a file on the cluster that, that, near, that consumes uh, almost no space. And then, then you can retrieve archive data back from, from the public cloud actually. So, and that's policy-based uh, data archive migration back and forward actually so that's that's really a nice uh, functionality and a cool. lot of clients asked for this mm -hmm. um, and then we also have new api functionalities that that amplify to the s3 uh, compatibility so we have uh, support for new headers so that you can actually identify in in a replication what the status of that replication is where it's replicated from where to and and all those parameters are now very easily visible actually also in that uh, uh, new version version 8. nice cool so uh, on the policy-based data archive what are some kind of representative use cases or, or places where that would be of value just yeah you could context. actually uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, assign uh, a policy to your data, like if data is older than uh, a certain amount of time that it gets uh, uh, archived so that it get actually migrated off your production cluster to a, a cheaper location. And that could be uh, Amazon AWS, could be Azure, but also a Ceph cluster and even a, a, a IBM cost cluster. So there, there are several capabilities here to, to migrate uh, less actual data a, a less frequently used data away and you could do that by by creating these policies actually um so that you <laughs> keep your your most actual data uh in in immediate reach and and yeah. can migrate off and that can be for several applications that can be interesting uh, to to have nice. uh, well and yeah so just continuing the theme of having a very robust and high fidelity implementation of s3 uh with ceph so it just keeps improving which is uh very cool 
So, uh, new use cases. <clears throat> yeah, uh, new new use cases um, uh, for, for uh, IBM Storage Chef are now so, uh, or the, the use cases here are actually mentioned what, what we position IBM Storage Chef for, and that would be AIML data lake houses. Um, as actually to keep your your uh, data for analytics in, but also object storage as a service, and uh, that means that you can offer an object storage on prem uh, in in your own uh, data center and also replicate the data across multiple locations. That's a typical use case for IBM Storage Chef. A lot of our uh, enterprise clients uh, use this functionality. Of course, VMware Block Storage. We already spoke about it with the vSphere uh, uh, plugin integration. And now also general purpose file as a service. Uh, you could imagine that we already had this for, for, for Linux and for NFS systems for, for legacy clients. And now uh, in, in the combination with SMB, so that's a Windows file sharing and it will become uh, general available soon. Um, so, so these are the typical use cases where uh, IBM Storage Chef can shine, um, uh, Randy. Um, <clears throat> and finally, some, I guess, kind of quality of life enhancements with the UI and the dashboard. So what's uh, what's happening in that space? Yeah, there's there's a lot going on. There are a lot of uh, uh, updates have been made there. And cool. uh, uh, also integration with uh, uh, authentication like open auth, uh, single sign-on capabilities. You have that, that, that dashboard as a starting point where you start and from there you can click into internal services like uh, also uh, Prometheus, for instance, uh, and, and and click through while using uh, single sign-on. Th- these are, yeah, let's say s- small updates and, and improvements that make the life uh, so much easier. We also replaced uh, the, the web server that, that's uh, actually facilitating the dashboard UI that's now um, using Nginx. Uh, yeah, with all kind of other functionalities, a reverse proxy. So that brings along security announcements. Uh, as you can imagine, you, w- you would want to have uh, HTTPS connections, use SSL, uh, those kind of things. And the termination uh, was, was typically at a, a proxy level. And now you can terminate at the radios gateway level, make a choice where you want to terminate. So have enhanced security along the whole chain of, of data traffic, actually. Yeah. Uh, these kind of things, integration with uh, uh, things like um, um, S3 for, for uh, uh, server-side encryption by using uh, KMS services. We, we now fully support IBM Guardian Key, Lifecycle Manager, GKLM, but also uh, Thales, Tails, Cypher Trust. That's also a, um, a, a key management server that can now also be integrated with IBM Storage Chef easily and is fully supported also by IBM. Um, and uh, the logging, uh, for instance, of stuff can now also be configured that it all comes into the central uh, logs of, of IBM Storage Chef. So imagine you have different components. It's all very modular. It's uh, There are components running inside a Chef solution. And some of those components had their own, you know, logging. And now you can also uh, redirect all those logs to the centralized logging or to your logging service uh, so that you have that insight uh, in, in a more central place. Now, all these kind of improvements have been made uh, and, and, and many more. It's too much to dive into everything. And therefore, I would recommend to have a look at our uh, blog post that, that actually has more detail about what it precisely happens in, in 8.0, in new functionality to get a more uh, a decent understanding of these uh, functionalities. Yeah, and then the blog post is really good. It, it kind of goes through in a lot more detail and lays out um, you know, the new features as well as kind of the foundational elements. So speaking of that, let's, <clears throat> let's nerd out just a little bit before we wrap up and talk about uh, uh, Crimson. So, so what, is, uh, what is Crimson? Can you give me just kind of a, yeah. a layman's uh, overview uh, of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Crimson, that's actually a new uh, backend for, for IBM Storage 7 that's to replace uh, the current OSD implementation. And now you may ask yourself, what is OSD? <laughs> OSD stands for Object Storage Device. And it's actually the device, the disk device, where we are writing to uh, under under the hood of, uh, of Ceph. So they, we use uh, NVMe disks or, or, uh, or, or spinning disks, and we, we, we address those as OSDs, uh, Object Storage Daemon. And the disk is being handled by a process, by a daemon, and hence the name OSD. Now, um, Crimson is an entire new implementation of that OSD process. It actually replaces 
the OSD. It's also backwards compatible and it's based on modern uh, application language. Actually, it's, it uses uh, like Rust there where the OSD was was written in C, uh, C plus. So this is um, less complexity, yeah. more performance and more reliability also. So, so this is why this development uh, happens actually. And um, it's now available in tech preview. And it's like the same with SMB, it's to be released uh, for general availability in a later iteration of RBM Store itself. Yeah, uh, so I thought this was pretty cool because it, it demonstrates not just the outward facing you know, features and enhancements and capabilities, but really the core functional elements of the stack are constantly being innovated and revised and improved and enhanced, so. Absolutely, and there, there is, a, yeah, there, there are also other uh, uh, things uh, going on uh, under the hood in the core. That that are improvements uh, being made, uh, on, and that's also if you, if you go to the blog, then you have more detail on what's precisely going on there. But uh, this is a nice example of of these uh, developments. Yeah, yeah, very cool. So um, the great overview, uh, Marcel. Thanks so much. Uh, as Marcel mentioned, there's a blog that goes into more detail somewhere on the screen here. I'll put a QR code for the blog. I'd encourage you to go check that out. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you have any questions or you're getting customer questions about stuff, um, you know, hopefully this is helpful. Um, I'll also, well, I'll, I'll put a link to the deck, right? So there's also the deck that we uh, grabbed a couple of slides from here to demonstrate or to, to talk through. Uh, I'll put the full content up there as well and put a link to that too, I guess yeah, on that's... OneDrive now, our new file sharing service. <clears throat> yeah, uh -huh. if I can figure it out. Then you, then you have a condensed overview of uh, of these features and functionalities to get a more uh, more yeah. deep dive on things. Yeah, that's a great plan, uh, Randy. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for watching, uh, Marcel. Thanks as always. Great to talk to you, and thanks for uh, continuing to uh, produce really cool stuff with Ceph, uh for us and for our customers. Great stuff. And thanks uh, for being. We'll chat again uh, probably after the after the new year. So. Yeah. Already. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.